Hello everyone, it's Richard here with an autumn update on my 3D printing adventures. Okay, so this one's taken a little while to get recorded, but I thought I'd better just get it down because I've been so busy since the TCT show with 3D printing and some other stuff that isn't 3D printing, but I really need to just get you a bit of an update on all of the things that happened at TCT and some of the things that I uh, got there at the show and afterwards and all the projects and things I've been working on since. So very, very busy, but let's go right back uh, last month to the TCT show and I'll just give you a bit of an update on what I found out there and just what was going on really. So I was on the E3D stand a lot of the time. They were kind enough to give me a bit of a home for the TCT show because we didn't have a RepRap community hub this time uh, which was a bit disappointing but there was still a, an enormous community of RepRap 3D printing, open source and generally maker companies that came together. A lot more European companies which was fantastic so we really just had a great great time over those few days at TCT proving that there's still a very very active high level market there for 3D printing and making and just generally consuming that type of technology. So really, really exciting. E3D have just launched their scaffold officially. So it's been out for a little while, but officially it's now launched uh, as a production product, not as a beta product. And I've been doing quite a bit of work on the printing for that. So soon I'll be able to show you a lot of the different um, models that I've been making uh, on the BCN 3D Sigma, on some other machines, on the Prusa i3 MK2 and also the big box as well. So I'll try and give you a bit of an idea of the way that the uh, scaffold material is going and it's working very well. So generally, yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. It's looking like a good material for support uh, uh, structures. So E3D also had some really exciting tiny nozzles um, and they are hopefully scheduled to come out soon, but they're working on the geometry and getting all of those just right. But they showed off some fantastic prints at the TCT show with these tiny, tiny nozzles. These are 0.15 millimeter nozzles, and these models had to be seen in real life, really. Uh, I'll show you some pictures of the uh, 3D printed models. These are FDM models. But in real life, they rival any SLA type print you've ever seen. And the detail, the quality is just absolutely phenomenal. So really interesting, maybe for jewelry and all sorts of different things. Tiny machines, hopefully we'll start seeing. Uh, I'm doing a little bit of work on tiny nozzles as well. So I'll show you that as soon as I can. So the other big company that was there that was quite significant this year because they've just launched a new machine, which was the Perusa i3 MK2 which just before the show I built up with my daughter and we've been having lots and lots of fun with that. Joe was at the show uh, showing off the four extruder system for the Prusa i3 which is really interesting. It's a single nozzle uh, track train system that pushes one of four different colors or different materials into the nozzle, uses it, purges and then moves on. So. That looks like a really good system. I've actually taken the plunge and got one of those on order, so that should be coming in November, hopefully, if Joe can keep up with demand on the printers and everything else that's going crazy with the uh, i3 Mark II. So their company is growing like mad and selling lots and lots of those systems and those machines. I hope to be able to test the four system, four into one nozzle soon, and just let you know a bit more about that. Designing for it is going to be a challenge, of course, because you need to design the part in three different and four different parts. So that's another thing that I might look deeply at and sort of go through the procedure of how you would actually go about doing that. OK, before I go on any further then, so a few people have said, what's behind the screen? I always use the grey screen and this time I've got it up a little bit so you can see really it's just the printers I'm using and the development area that I do. 3D printing with. It's a fairly small little space I've got for 3D printing. So behind the screen that I'm always filming in front of it are my systems that I've got on the go at the moment. So I've got the Sigma and some space here because I'm doing some work on the Sigma which I'll explain a little bit more in detail. So at the TCT show the Sigma, the BCN 3D Sigma was on the Hawk 3D Proto stand. Big shout out to those guys. They were absolutely fantastic during the show. They also gave me some wonderful Protopasta 
matte fiber filament. This is a really nice new material from Protopasta, which I've been using, getting on with quite well, and really enjoying how it looks. It's a little bit rough and ready on the surface, but it gives you a almost layer-free finish that's a little bit um, uh, more like, well, it's actually a sort of a fiber filled material. So it looks a little bit like their carbon fiber, but on a, just a matte, uh, colorful uh, material rather than just being black. So that was really exciting. Um, the BCN 3D team were all there as well from Barcelona, so it's great to see Roger and all the team. And they're doing lots of work in the background on the Sigma, um, which I've had a few upgrades and various things sent through now. There are this little board, which I've just got through in the post just the other day, which I'm about to put onto the machine. And I'm also working on some other upgrades to reduce the noise, fan noise and various other things. That little board as well uh, also reduces the noise on the extruder system. So it actually turns off the cooling fans to inactive nozzles. So that reduces the noise quite a bit. That will be launched uh, fairly soon, I believe, maybe in the new year. I'll have to double check with BCN 3D what their plans are, along with other tweaks and changes to the BCN 3D. Um, one of the other companies that were at, that was at the TCT show was Bontech. Now they were being represented by Enviro or Enviro Technology, uh, M, sorry, MVO Technology. Uh, at the show and they had some interesting upgrades for the BCN 3D Sigma so that was quite nice because I've never used Bontech extruders before and I managed to get hold of two of these extruder sets uh, kindly from Enviro Technology and here they are so they are actually this is a normal Bontech extruder without the the mount and what MVO have done I've created a mount for the BCN 3D Sigma, which allows you to replace the BCN normal extruder, which is a great hunking uh, extruder, massive motor, uh, very powerful, but it does squash the filament. Um, it can squash the filament. Uh, so the idea with the Bontech, and it's, it, it's been around for, for some time because other extruders use it as well, but the idea with the Bontech is that it grips the filament on both sides and forces it down and doesn't over push so it doesn't over squeeze and doesn't compress the filament it just grips it really nicely with the teeth and pushes it and because it's using a planetary gearbox motor you can actually get a huge amount of force they had some demonstration systems at the show and you just couldn't pull them it was it was pushing the filament through and you were trying to pull it back and however hard people tried they were they were unable to rip that filament out so pretty good demonstration, physical demonstration of the power of these Bontech extruders. So I've now, for a few weeks now, I've been using them in the BCN 3D Sigma just behind me and there's two Bontech extruders in there now um, which have replaced these two. You have to do a few things and I've got a separate video that I will put up on how to do that upgrade and the benefits you get from it. But it's been really interesting comparing the original BCN Sigma with the extruders and the extrusion system and the steps per millimeter on there because of course this is a direct drive big fat motor that's pushing directly onto the onto the filament um, so the steps are around 150 i believe something around those sort of things and up to here you've got um, a much larger amount of steps because you've got a five to one planetary gearbox so you end up having a much higher gearing with more precision on the amount of uh, uh, um, uh, steps per millimeter you have on pushing the filament through into your hot end so that's really interesting and that's a, this this other one is for another project that I'm working on as well so the BCN 3D Sigma is now looking quite nice to be able to print incredibly fine details um, and this is really where a, a, a geared extruder comes in for a long time with all of my 3D printers I've come to the conclusion that you need a really good hot end and that hot end is usually an E3D because from my experience they produce the world's best hot ends. I've tried lots and lots of others and I've made my own but to be honest life's too short to be messing around with, with hot ends that don't work so that's my decision on, on that. I will use an E3D hot end wherever possible and the extruder is the other side, a geared extruder of some description. So you can get away with direct drives and the BCN 3D Sigma used a massive motor to push three millimeter material through a Bowden tube, which is fine, but it does create some 
issues. So it's nice to see that Bontech and other people are doing systems that allow you to upgrade even production machines like the BCN 3D Sigma and possibly the Ultimakers and other systems that are out there as well. So I've had some really good um, prints with this and I will carry on using it for a lot of detailed fine printing just to see how much more uh, accurate we can get with printing layers and tiny details, tiny infills and lots of retractions because the one thing you do have is a bit of a problem uh, with some machines especially on extruders that just compress that really just squeeze the filament when you're doing lots and lots and lots of tiny retractions especially in a Bowden tube you're lifting the filament backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and that slowly puts more and more pressure on the filament and crushes it and crushes it and produces a smooth edge and the other side just ends up slipping and sometimes will grind away so it doesn't matter what you do really with an extruder like that because you're just doing so many reversals so many um, uh, small movements on the extruder that it's virtually you know it's using just about a meter or so of filament but it's using it in tiny tiny little bits and constantly reversing and I found the Bontech just allows that it, it grips really tight but it doesn't crush and it doesn't grind into the filament so I'm getting some really good results and really happy with it I'll show you lots more on that um, soon so that was uh, in MVO technology MVO engine engineering um, and that was a really nice uh, sort of experience with Bontech because I've I really just never had anything to do with them before, uh, never used their their extruders or, or had any reason to you know to fit them to machines. So it's nice that this is a good example of uh, of doing that. Another company that grabbed me while I was walking around was Magigoo. So this is the new Magigoo material that you can now paint onto your onto your heat bed. You push down and it comes out in a sort of a liquidy type form and then you, you move it around. The only problem I've got with this, it works really well. I've got it on the BCN 3D Sigma at the moment and it really, really works. So this is a nice, easy to use material that allows your prints to stick and easy remove once they're cool. Um, and that you couldn't really ask for, for much more than that. It does work. The only problem is the applicator. The applicator is, is not great. I've obviously spent some time selecting this method and it's a push down method and then you're supposed to wipe it on but it's got a lot of grooves on and it's sort of rubberized but not quite soft enough and it produces a lot of grooves on the thing so I've been using I've been just putting the the liquid on pushing down getting a little pool of liquid and using a little plastic card to basically just smear the uh, the the magic goo all over the surface uh, of the size of the print you're going to do uh, and that seems to work fine so do it when it's cold and then warm it up to freeze everything and, and get everything dry before printing so I've been pretty impressed with Magigoo uh, there's lots of them out there all sorts of things people use glue sticks uh, but yeah that works you know as it as described it actually works really well uh, another company that I've been following closely because I'm currently backing one of their kickstarters is uh, Polymaker and they have the Polisher and the Poly Smooth filaments. So it's nice to see. I've just seen an update come in the email that they're actually solved the final few productions with final final few problems with the production tooling that they had with the machine. Um, so they should be able to get that out to backers hmm, hopefully by the end of the year. But they've been a little bit delayed, probably maybe four weeks, five weeks delayed on that. But it's looking good. They also had some examples at the show and they very kindly gave me some samples of the poly smooth material which I've tested out. It works just like just like PLA so it's nice and easy to use. Um, I haven't dipped any in IPA yet because I've been really quite keen to see uh, when the notification for the polisher that I've backed on the Kickstarter will get sent out. Uh, if that doesn't happen soon then I will start playing around with some IPA and seeing what I can do with the material without the system itself. So that's that. Um, we've got a few other things that were at the show that I must sort of mention because they were so super cool or just really interesting and one was Emotion Tech and they were doing a really nice micro delta printer I got picked up a little card and I had a really chat good chat to those guys they're in France and I was just really impressed with this as a little mini delta printer they had lots of positive things to say about the community and everything else that they're trying to do with open source and it had a pretty good price I think it was 
a few hundred euros for the base model going up and they had different systems on there that they were planning on doing. So if you're not aware of, of um, Emotion Tech, have a little look, it's the Micro Delta rework and it looks quite nice, I was quite impressed. So another company that was at the show is, was 3D Filiprint and I've known them for quite some time so it's always useful to go over and see what materials they've got and see what they're doing. And the big thing on their stand this year was a massive 3D printed pinball machine which was just fantastic, really really amazing. Completely 3D printed, thousands of hours of, of printing and design work and just yeah just absolutely remarkable the amount of effort that's gone into that so uh, I believe that there's a manual and information all about that printer now I'll put some links in the description below if you want to have a look uh, about that uh, pinball sorry uh, pinball machine uh, so you can have a look at it and just marvel at the technology that was used to produce it really so it's really nice to see those types of machines being resurrected via 3d printing if you have the time and inclination to do those sort of things Okay, so the next thing I list is Photocentric. Now, Photocentric is another company I met at the TCT show a year ago, and they were back again with some new machines that looked really, really interesting, really exciting. We saw uh, quite a few changes with their licensing and programs they were using because one of their main slicing program engines, I've forgotten the name of it now, but has gone closed source, so they've had to sort of sh shuffle things around a little bit. Um, but they have machines that are being launched now and I've been trying to get hold of one for review but it looks like I'm not going to be able to get one even to look at uh, and and review or just uh, comment on until probably the end of the year so I'll keep that I'll keep you updated on whether I managed to do that because I'm really interested in what photocentric could do with daylight resins did also talk to eSun about daylight resins because they've put in the press they've published some information about PLA daylight resins so I followed up uh, and talked to them at the show and had a few meetings subsequently and have had a few conversations with them so I hope to get some samples of that for testing in the photocentric machine but also um, other machines as well that I've been developing myself and possibly also look at the uh, normal resins, the normal UV resins in say a Form 1 or something like that as well. So I'll keep you updated on both the Photocentric and the eSun uh, developments and let you know what's going on there. Another very cool thing I saw at the show was some silicon printing using silicon oils and an activator using a nozzle. So again those types of things were just really magical to see that there are some innovations doing with materials and systems as well and these were things like hearing aids where you can print basically look like production tooled silicon uh, enclosures and they looked absolutely fantastic you couldn't really see the layers being printed in a gel and frozen um, it's quite amazing to watch the little video clip but it looks like it's moving around and it would produce a really hideous shape but actually the gel and everything else keeps it all solid and um, information as it sets and then you just pick it out at the end and give it a wash and clean so those sort of things yeah really excited about what's going to happen with materials and new machines uh, in 2017. On that line also there was um, a few companies there with some really special materials <clears throat> one was Haydale and I've now got some PLA graphene to try Graphene is obviously wonder, wonder material, great as a surface texture coating, not really as an additive for, for this type of thing, but we will see, and I've been very open-minded about graphene as to what it can do and what it will do for 3D printing, and also um, from them as well some poly polypropylene, which is quite a difficult material to print. I had a go with it about three or four years ago from a Chinese source that got me some, and it was it was terrible it was really really hard to print so I'll be really interested to see how well they've done there to see whether it was a bit easier to print with now it's quite an oily waxy type of um, material so quite difficult but um, I'll let you know about the graphene and the polypropylene um, on that side because you can just about see if you look over here my shelf of all my materials that's something I've been meaning to do for ages because all of my materials were very all over the place and I've now got two rescued wonderfully um, upcycled bookshelves that I rescued from a bookshop that was sadly closing down they were closing everything and they had an advert in the paper to say come and get bookshelves if you need them 
and I, and I said to them, well, yep, yeah, I could fit as many as I can in the car. And they were huge. They were eight foot tall and four foot wide. So I got a couple of them and they were perfect sized for all my 3D printing materials. So I've got everything on there now and it looks really easy um, to find everything and you can see everything on display. So just over there. But while I was digging through my 3D printing materials, I discovered one that I've had for about six months and it's been in this room in normal ambient temperature not really not really doing anything just minding its own business after I initially tested it for um, a, a sample batch and it was some nylon material from a new company I'm still not sure I'm allowed to actually tell anyone about it so I won't tell you the name but just out of interest I just wanted to show you what happened to this this reel of material because it, I've never seen this before so I'll just take the sticker off because it is still a prototype material this one and it is very very good this is a wonderful nylon so I really enjoyed using it I used up one roll and this is the spare roll but here we go so I hope you can see that and can you see what's happened to this amazing spool of nylon now this was a perfectly normal spool of nylon and over the time it seems to have either I can't say dried out because it was perfectly dry. I did dry this completely before using it. Oh, garky, that's, that's even broken the actual spool now and I've been trying to bend it back. But yeah, the forces on this nylon have actually ripped this spool completely, opened it up and actually pushed all the material back in and compressed itself. So as far as I can see, it's just, it's just like it's, it's just like it shrunk on the reel and, and squeezed and compressed and crunched this entire roll. There's a massive split this side that's pulling all this off. Um, and this says, this reel says it's polycarbonate. So this reel is polycarbonate and I, I think it is. Uh, it feels like polycarbonate. So that nylon has ripped this reel virtually to shreds and torn and it's just been sat on a shelf. So I haven't even noticed that that's, that was what was happening, but it was sat on a shelf like that. And when I looked at it, when I was tidying through all of my materials and putting them on the shelf, I saw that. So there you go, quite interesting discovery um, for that, that material. Okay, so what else have I got to tell you? Um, oh, yes, uh, because we're on the subject of BCN 3D, because this is in the background, they've just been announced on 3D Hubs that they are, let me get this right, 3D Printing Guide, 3D Hubs 3D Printing Guide 2017, the Sigma is best of 3D Hub's Workhorse. So Workhorse 2007. Interestingly, there's a few other best of workhorses. Um, and also, there's one I'm gonna show you in just a second, so hang on. And also the Perusa i3 is in the best of budget 2017 system. So if you wanna have a look there, see a little bit more about printer choices. Um, I was quite pleased because all the printers I use daily, which is the Sigma, and now the Prusa i3, and I'm gonna show you another one in a second, which also has won an award, uh, have, have won these wonderful awards. So it's nice to sort of see that these printers that I find quite easy to use and, and enjoyable, and also get the results that I want, have been giving awards in the press as well. So that's nice. We're also starting to see a bit more from Printerbot. Brooke has started um, tweeting and just talking a little bit more about what's going on with them because they've been in deep development of doing all sorts of interesting things. So we're starting to see more coming out of Printerbot. I believe they've got a new um, uh, uh, simple uh, Printerbot simple out, which is a bit more metal. There's a lot of aluminium in the pictures that I saw and a cloud slicing engine that you can use, Wi-Fi enabled printer. So we're going to see some really interesting things. I think they called it the Printerbot 2016, which seems a little bit, they should have called it the 2017. Maybe they'll change the name, but I would have thought, yeah, it should be the 2017 because it's likely to be out soon. Um, so you should be able to get that printer.
So on the Lulzbot stand, they had the Mini and the Taz 6. Now the Taz 6 is quite a big printer. It's all fully approved for sort of global sales. So it's got FCC certifications. Um, and actually I was really, really impressed seeing it in the flesh, what it actually looked like. So they've put a lot of effort into this machine. It's still a sort of 3D printed. It's got some 3D printed parts. You can still build it yourself. It's still open source but they've put quite a lot of effort into refining it down to be a really nice production machine up there with the best of them. So it was great to see this running. We had a really good chat. The team from Lulzbot are just, just fantastic. I mean, they, they are a shining example of how to do open source and the best example I, I, I know still of how to do open source fully and uh, unashamedly completely open source everything they do all of their systems are completely open so um, not for everyone and some people border on that open closed and they take a bit of a liberty on licensing and various other things but yeah Lulzbot do it pretty much straight straight as you can get with full open source anyway the reason why I'm babbling on about it is because I talked to uh, them in depth and talked to them a little bit after the show um, also had uh, a few conversations about the availability of the Lulzbot machines and just being a little bit more aware of, of the, those types of machines in the market. Again, over in the UK, it's actually it's one of the machines where you don't see very often. You don't talk, hear people talking about it all that much. You do see online and lots of people use it all around the world. They've got a big distribution base and uh, resellers and everything. But this was the first time they were at the international show at the TCT. So it was nice to get an opportunity to talk to them about that. Anyway, the big the big news is they've actually sent me one. So, wow, really exciting. And um, I'll just go and grab it for you because it is absolutely huge. And I'll be opening and unboxing it very, very shortly. This is pretty big. Okay, so yes, as you can see, they sent me the shirt as well, the t-shirt with the octopus on the back. So I'm all t-shirted up, ready to do a little bit more work on the Taz 6. Now, <laughs> yeah, it's so big, I'm gonna have a problem just even lifting it up to show you, but here we go. There we go, the Lulzbot Taz 6 is a monster. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to getting that out of the box and playing around with it and generally just looking at what upgrades and things we can do with this machine and what printing quality we get. So I've got some good benchmarks to put it up against, the BCN 3D Sigma, the uh, Mark III Prusa i3 and also the E3D uh, system as well. So it's going to be quite nice to see how well that, that works against those three systems and what sort of quality we get out of the machine. So I'm really looking forward to that. You can tell I'm quite excited. It's just turned up for delivery. So I will open this up and obviously give you a lot more information about that. So, okay, the only other things I can think of really were that since the show, I've been doing lots and lots of 3D printing. We've had Halloween, been using the uh, Prusa i3 Mark II uh, quite a lot for Halloween and all the other printers as well, doing lots of test prints and lots of different things. The push to get all of my materials sorted has really um, focused my attention on materials. So I will be doing a lot more work on different materials and trying to give you a bit more of an update on those. Tom is doing a fantastic guide on all sorts of materials at the moment, testing the strengths, testing their abilities to withstand temperatures 
and just how well they perform really. So that's a totally inspiring series uh, to look at and just to give you a bit more of a taste for different materials you can use with 3D printing. It certainly spurred me on to sort out my materials collection and actually start using some in different machines and gauge how well they work in different machines with different extruder systems. Like I say, I'm a big fan of E3D hot ends. So a lot of the time I will be looking at that. The TAS 6 is going through hot end changes at the moment. So we will see what, uh, what that brings to the quality. Uh, if you're used to the TAS 6 and the hexagon hot end, then keep an eye out because we will hopefully see a few changes there very shortly on, on this machine. I'll tell you more about that as soon as I get this up and running and start printing with it and start doing a few comparisons. So really looking forward to this. Also, the guys from, from uh, Lulzbot also sent me some really interesting materials that you can't get very easily in the UK or in Europe. So they're more ones that I've seen in the US that people have been talking about that are a little bit more, well, just, just different. So I'm quite excited that I've got a small box of materials of those as well, which I will endeavour to tell you all about. Uh, I hope I haven't forgotten too many people that I met at the TCT show. It was fantastic. I had a really wonderful time. I was there for both days. Uh, completely exhausted, took me a while just to recover, just to actually get my voice back. It was amazing. So everyone else I met and talked to about their wonderful 3D printing projects, some people coming back year after year to tell me how, how well they're doing and how, how, how they're progressing with their businesses, with their projects, with their machines, with their developments, with their interest in 3D printing. So it was just wonderful to catch up with everyone. So I'm sorry if I've forgotten anyone. I did obviously talk to you and meet you. Um, and if you if you think of anything or if you're one of the people I've missed out please send me a message and maybe I will give you a shout out in the next video so thanks ever so much I'll see you all next time I know this is a bit of a long one and you can tell from my hair this is the longest you'll see my hair I normally have it cut by now by the time it gets to this length so next time you'll see me my hair should be shorter I haven't even had time to have a haircut so anyway on to 3d printing and see you next time thanks a lot